CalSoft Test Excel is a scriptless automation framework designed to expedite your automation needs. It provides an off-the-shelf, ready-to-use tool. In this demo, we will look at various features and functionalities offered by Test Excel. Test Excel works by learning the specifications of your product CLI or REST API. You then write configuration files describing your testbed setup and the arguments to your product. Using these files, you write test cases which define a workflow. Test Excel can execute these tests on multiple endpoints such as REST, CLI, or your own proprietary shell. It generates consolidated test reports formatted in HTML and interactive logs gathered during the execution of each workflow. Let us begin with a simple ping command. Normally, you would open up a command prompt and type it in like this. But this command also takes other arguments, a list of which can be seen like this. Let's say we want to use the hyphen aura option to display the root used. We would execute the command like this. Now let's automate this workflow using test Excel. First we will create a specification file for the ping command. A spec file describes the command line arguments that your program accepts. The name of this file is what you would type on the command prompt, that is ping, followed by a .cli extension. This is a comma separated values file which can be opened in Excel or any spreadsheet editor. The first row is the header, under which we have one row for each command line argument and its properties. The first one here is the IP address argument which is mandatory, and the other two arguments root, which we just used, and fragment, which is simply a flag. Next, we create a configuration file that contains the values to each of these arguments. A config file is a plain text file with the conf extension. It can contain multiple sections, as you can see here. The first one corresponds to arguments to the ping program. Here we specify the IP address that we want to use and values to edit parameters. Now that we have specification and configuration files ready, Let's write a test case that uses them. A test case is again a CSV formatted file where each row corresponds to a single step in a test workflow. As you can see here, we are executing the ping command with different CLI arguments in each step. That's it. We're all set to execute this test case. Let's open up a command prompt and execute the test Excel CLI. Here, we specify the path to the expect, config, and test case files that we just created and the path to a reports directory. Test Excel will execute the test in read from logs. Let's have a look at those. This is what a log file looks like. It's an HTML and can be opened in any web browser. We see an overview of the pass fail metrics followed by the actual test. There's a handy hyperlink to the TST file that corresponds to this test. You can further drill down into the test case to look at the logs for each step. Inside the step, we can look at the exact command that was executed. The standard output and error is saved in individual files accessible via these links. Now in a real workflow, you would want to process this output. Let's say you wanted to find the maximum run trip taken by this ping request. Test Excel allows you to write your own scripts in any scripting language and integrate them in your test workflow. Here, I've written a small Python script that uses regular expressions to parse the output and find the maximum round trip time. Now, the way this works is, you tell Test Excel that you want to save the output of the step in a variable, say out, and then use the value of that variable in the next step. The ampersand sign denotes the path to a file containing this output. Since the output of ping has multiple lines, it makes sense to read it from a file rather than directly pass it on the command line, which can be done by using the dollar sign instead of the ampersand. Now let's go back to the log and see how this worked. My script was executed in step 3 with these command line arguments. It produced an output containing maximum round trip time that we were looking for. In this way, we can chain multiple outputs and use them to link subsequent steps into test workflow. 
Test Excel supports agent-based remote execution on any OS platform. You simply start the remote X server here and it waits for a request from the master node. We create a remote host configuration, which is again a CSV formatted file, in which we give the host an alias and specify its IP address. Since we are using TestExcel's internal XML RPC mechanism, we do not need any credentials to make this connection. In our first run, we directly use the test case file for execution, but this time, let's create a test plan file that gives us more control over how the tests will be executed. In this file, each row corresponds to a test case, in which we specify the name of the TST file, any setup or teardown hooks, and the remote host alias that we just created. TestExcel has several settings that control its behavior. These are outlined in a configuration file. Here, we enable the remote execution flag, which is a handy one-touch switch to enable or disable remote execution. Other options such as a log path, parallel execution, etc. can also be configured here. Now when we execute the test plan, the remote server acknowledges the request to execute the netstat command. Once again, the output of this command is captured in the logs like this. Now what if you have a storage box or an appliance on which you cannot deploy a test excel agent? What if your appliance has its own shell that supports custom CLI commands? Let's take an example of the ESX CLI. We can establish an SSH connection to the ESX server and execute a command like this. TestXL allows you to automate this by performing agentless remote execution via the SSH channel. We add an entry to the remote host configuration with the connection type as SSH. Here, we need to specify a username and password, but key-based passwordless authentication is also supported. On executing this test case, we can see that the logs have captured the output of this command from the SSH tunnel. TestExcel supports execution of REST API endpoints as well. Here, I have a free NAS server on which we will create a snapshot using a REST API. This is a Firefox plugin that acts as a REST client. So let's see what an API looks like. We will first list the snapshots using a GET request. Now that you know the URL and its response, let's write a specification file to tell this to test Excel. The spec file for a REST API is formatted in YAML. If you prefer working in this format, then all CSV files that we looked at till now can also be written in the equivalent YAML format. We will be using basic HTTP authentication for this API, so we set the auth enabled parameter to true and describe the API endpoint. Now to create a snapshot, we would make a POST request in which we specify some parameters in a JSON payload. Since these payloads can get lengthy, let's write them in a separate job JSON file. In our configuration template, we create sections for the GET and POST requests and use a path to this .json file as the payload. The test execution has succeeded. So let's go to the FreeNAS UI and verify that a snapshot was actually created. Here it is. Finally, let me execute a plan with multiple test cases to give you an idea of how the consolidated test report looks like. Here we have a summary of the past fail statistics. We can drill down inside a test suite to see a list of the test cases. The comments that you see here are coming from the linked TST files that we wrote earlier. Clicking on a test case will take us to the logs that we just saw. Test Excel can help your automation team to get up and running instantly. It's test automation accelerated.